Hello and welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Nicole and today it is time to do the mid-year freakout tag. So I have been watching people do this tag for a really long time now it seems like. So I'm super excited to do this tag. Um, I actually don't know who created it. Uh, I don't see that on most people's videos anymore. But if I do figure it out, I will put that in the description box below. But like I said, this tag has been around on BookTube for quite a while at this point. So let's just go ahead and jump on into it. So question number one is, what is the best book that you have read this year so far? And surprisingly, when I went back and looked at my five star reads, I had to honestly say that it was The Phantom Tollbooth. Uh, this was not the book that I was expecting to pick, and it is a reread for me, and I reread it this year for the first time probably since I was a kid. And I just have to say that book was more than satisfying this go round. Um, it's probably one of my top three most reread books. <laughs> um, and I, I loved it as a child and read it over and over and over again. And even as an adult, when I finished reading the book, I wanted to read it again. And as an example of how much I liked it, it's actually going to be one of the few books I bring with me like on my person when I move. Um, this book is just about this bizarre fantasy land that this young bored boy ends up going to. And there are so many puns and word plays that happen in this. The illustrations are amazing. There's just nothing about this book that I don't like. Every single page, every single sentence, it grabs your attention and just keeps you reading. I think it is a book that you enjoy as a child because it's just so like full of fantastical images and things and adventures. And as an adult, there's just, I don't know, it's like a p satisfying puzzle for your brain. So if you haven't read this, I highly recommend picking it up because I'm pretty sure I'm going to reread it before the end of the year. Number two is the best sequel that you've read so far this year. And at first, I didn't think I was actually going to have a sequel because uh, if you've been with me for a while on my channel... <laughs> I don't tend to read series, but surprisingly, I did actually read a sequel this year, and this is another oddball pick for me, but it was Dune the Graphic Novel, book number two. It is the only book that I've read this year that has been part of a series that wasn't like book one in a series. So... I don't know. I don't know what that says. Well, I guess that's not totally true. I'm currently in the middle of book two of a different series. That I'm thinking about DNFing. And then there was another book that was part of a series that was book two in the duology, and I did DNF that one. Like I said, I'm not a big series reader, so that doesn't surprise me. So I guess Dude gets it, because it is one of the few series that I've actually read all the books that have come out so far, and I actually plan on reading the third one that comes out, I think, next month. Number three is a new release that you haven't read yet, but you'd really like to get to. And for me, I don't know whether or not this book has come out in 2024 or at the end of 2023, but I hear a lot of people talking about it and I really want to read it. And that would be James by Percival Everett. So I have heard that this book is basically a different perspective of the adventures of Huckleberry Finn. Namely, it's per the perspective of Jim or James, who is the escaped slave that Huckleberry Finn runs into in the book. As soon as I heard the premise of James, I knew that it was a book that I was going to want to read. Per partially just because I like books that take a different perspective from another well-known story. Um... That is just a, a theme and an idea that I just thoroughly enjoy. I can think of like Havisham would be another book that is like that, where it is the perspective of Mrs. Havisham from uh, the book Great Expectations. So as soon as I heard about James, I was interested, but it's also been all over BookTube and has just been praised through the roof. So that makes me read it, want to read it all the more. Number four is the most anticipated new release for the second half of 2024. I have no idea. So again, if you watch my channel regularly, you know, I don't tend to read new releases and I definitely don't track them. My favorite genre tends to be classics. And so that's what I tend to read the majority of the time. And then when I do read something that is more contemporary fiction, it tends to be based on hearing a lot of reviews and getting a lot of feedback and seeing it over and over again. So I would say the vast majority of my books aren't actually new purchases or new releases at all. 
And again, I, I don't follow it. So I don't even know what's coming out the second half of this year. So there's that. Number five is the book that is the biggest disappointment for 2024. And this was a little bit of a tricky pick because I've actually had one book this year that was a one star read, but I ended up deciding that actually wasn't my biggest disappointment for the year. And the reason is I really didn't go into reading that book with a lot of expectations. It just ended up being a book that I really didn't like. So I ended up deciding on the book that I felt like I had pretty high expectations for because it was pretty hyped and then pretty well recommended it to me. And then I just ended up feeling like it was okay. And that book is Zori by Laird Hunt. Um, and I think the reason for me that this was a really big disappointment was, like I said, I felt like the book had been hyped for the last year or two, um, or a couple years ago, whenever it first came out. And then I also kept hearing about it, had a couple of people recommend it, and I myself thought the book was going to be really interesting. But then upon reading it, I just discovered it was a writing style I wasn't particularly a fan of. Um, I didn't think the length of the book worked for me or really even worked for the book. Um, in terms of covering Zori's entire lifetime. And I felt like the marketing of the book in terms of focusing on her involvement in the radio radium factory was quite off and misleading in terms of what the story was about. So that was probably the book that has been the biggest disappointment for me so far this year. Number six is the book that has been the biggest surprise so far. And this was actually a three-way tie. I could not decide between a long fatal love chase the Snow Child and The Martian, three very different books in some ways. Um, but all three of these books were books that I was surprised by. I think because um, whether they had been hyped or not, I went into them for whatever reason, just expecting them to be okay, like a three star read, to be honest. And um, each of these books was at least a four star, if not a five star read for me. And that was completely unexpected. For A Long Fatal Love Chase, um, the book actually starts out, in my opinion, kind of cheesy. And I thought it was just going to stay that way for the entire book. And it did not. It actually reached depths I was not expecting and was so fun and fast paced with some amazing characters that I really just thoroughly enjoyed it. And I did not expect to find that. The Martian was another one that is just in a genre that like I read occasionally, but not frequently. And for it to be such a lighthearted sci-fi, I was not expected to be as caught up in that book as I was. I, I literally was like shaking by the end of it, had to give it a hug. It was, it was great. And the third one, The Snow Child, was just such a deep, touching book, and I was not expecting that. My expectations of the book were actually that it was going to be scary. I don't know where I got that from. <laughs> and it definitely wasn't that, but it was a very moving book, and I was surprised by the elegance of the writing style. And so that was just a third book that just totally blew me away and took me by surprise, and I absolutely enjoyed on that note, I would have to say number seven is your favorite new author or a favorite new author. And for me, that would be Eulin Ivy. I'm not sure, still not sure if that's how you say her name, um, but I'll put it on the screen. And this is the author of The Snow Child. Again, I just loved her writing and storytelling so much after reading The Snow Child that it made me want to instantly read more of her work. And I just thought, if all of her books are written like this, I'll read anything she writes. So I can't wait to move on and read some more of her work. Number eight is your newest fictional crush, and I don't tend to have fictional crushes, so I'm going to say none. Number nine is a book that made me cry. And for that, I'm going to go with the Doomsday Book by Connie Willis. And I'm pretty sure I came close to ugly crying towards the end of this book. This book is pretty heavy, which was not something I was expecting. And so because of that, it almost went in the spot for the most surprising book. Um, I had actually read the second book um, in this sort of series or connected universe, um, which was To Say Nothing of the Dog. And I read that last year. And that book, in my opinion, is hilarious. And so I was expecting more of the same from this book. And I was really caught off by just how deep and sad and touching and moving and the this entire book was, and the fact that it made me cry a lot. <laughs> so um, yeah, that, that, that gets the pick. Like I was really sad by the end of that book, just in general. In fact, I think I had to follow it up with uh, 
three men in a boat just to make myself laugh. Number 10 is the most beautiful book that I bought so far this year, and I'll have to go with The Book of Disquiet. Um, I will put the edition I have up here on the screen, and I don't know, this this book, in the, particularly in this edition, just blows my mind. I love the artistry of it. I love this edition of this book, and I was so happy when I just happened to stumble across it in a used bookstore. And number 11 is books that I need to read before the end of the year. So I know everybody always says that, you know, there's no book you need to read, you know, but no, I need to read this book. <laughs> I'm going to say it. I need to read this book. And that would be Drood by Dan Simmons. So this has been a book project that has been on my mind since I bought it two years ago now. And I have been working my way through some books and a project to get to the point where I feel like I would have enough background information to then read this book. And I recently just finished reading The Mystery of Edwin Drood, and I now feel like I'm ready to read this book. And I have to read it before the end of the year because I want to read it while I still have that story fairly close in my mind. And I'm just ready. I'm ready to read this book. <laughs> I have very, 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 very high expectations for this book, so I hope it does not fail me. And it's actually the next book that I'm about to pick up. I can't wait. So yeah, I have a high need to read it before the end of this year, and I'm going to do it well, basically right now. <laughs> So that is it for today. Um, normally I would tag people, but I feel like this is a book tag that just goes around on its own. So if you are watching this video and you want to do this, just go ahead and do it. You know, consider yourself tagged if you need, you know, to have permission to do it. Um, and yeah, if you uh, don't have a booktube channel and you'd still like to share your answers to the questions, please leave them below in the comments. I would love to know um, your thoughts on all of these questions. And, you know, if you want to tag me um, or mention me in your video or description or whatever so that I know you've done the video, let me know that way as well so I can watch your video. And I will talk to you next time. Bye!